Hey everyone, welcome. So how slow is shifting on this Shimano Qs based on Link Glide technology compared to other Shimano group sets? Is it complicated to install a U6000 group set like the one you see in my hands? Those are the couple of things that I'm gonna try to cover in this video. So let's get to it. And I already have three videos on Shimano Qs talking about the details of each component. So in this video, I'm not gonna focus on that at all. I'm only gonna mention the few tips and tricks that I learned along the way. And I'm gonna point you up in the corner to a few videos that I already have covering details like how to install a bottom bracket. So let's start with these two. And the bottom bracket that I'm gonna use on this 73 millimeter bottom bracket shell is the MT501, the entry level bottom bracket from Shimano. There's not much to mention here aside from using the right tool and make sure you use their 40 Newton meter recommended for tightening the cups. One is reverse threaded as well, so pay attention to the arrows on the cups themselves. Installation of the cranks, it's a bit different because of the new style. So first of all, I would just take that preload adjuster and tighten it, put a bit of grease on that 24 millimeter steel spindle and slide it into the bottom bracket. What's different from previous Shimano cranks is that on this drive side, you're gonna use that eight millimeter hex key and tighten this to about 40 Newton meters as Shimano recommends. Then go to the non-drive side and use that preload adjuster to take out all the play on the spindle. There's no real tricks here on how to do that, but if you wanna remove these cranks, just keep in mind they are gonna need one of these crank extractors. I haven't used one of these in a while, but you're definitely gonna need that if you wanna remove a Shimano Q's crank set like this U6000. Next, we're gonna install this 11 to 50 tooth cassette, which is fairly simple because we're only gonna need a good old HG free hub body. And you also have one, two loose cogs and the lock ring, as usual, the lock ring, you tighten this up to four Newton meters. And with the cassette install, what I always do, I install the derailleur. This is the U6000 that, if you remember, it has a barrel adjuster right here at the end of it. This is a mounted bike, so I don't plan to use this at all, so just tighten it. But make sure that your derailleur hanger is not bent. Use a tool like this park, and you would be amazed. Look at this. I'm touching right there with the O-ring. And look at how bent this is on a vertical plane. So always check that first, definitely for 10, 11 speed drivetrains. Make sure that clutch lever is in the off position. You're gonna use a five millimeter Allen key and you see already some sort of Loctite on that tightening bolt. Also pay attention to that B gap stop. You have this little tab that has to be right against it and tighten that bolt to anywhere between eight and 10 Newton meters, making sure that your tab is actually touching the stop at the end. There we go. And the last thing that I would do here is use a two millimeter Allen key to adjust that high limit screw that is aligning that top jockey right to the outside of this smallest cog of the cassette. Nothing's really special about the installation of this U6000 drivetrain. And I'm gonna refer you folks to this video that has gathered already like a million and a half views for all the nitty gritty details like gear indexing later on. But before I forget, I wanna give a shout out to Paul at bikecomponents.ca because all these Q's parts came from him and he also provided a 5% discount for you folks following my channel. Make sure you check that in the description of the video. Next, what I like to do is install the chain, not the shifter, believe it or not. This is a Shimano 11 speed link glide chain. You see that the little link glide logo stamped right here on some of those links. It's pretty much this logo but uh, you don't really need a Link Glide 11 speed chain for cues. You can use anything like this if you want to. I've already treated the chain with wax. 
this is what I would recommend in case you are wondering. And when it comes to sizing it, they use the same logic used with 12 speed. So chain on the chain ring and the largest cog, bring the ends together and then you're gonna count a few add-on links. One, two, three, and four, plus the quick link would be for hardtail. Add at least one or two for full suspension. Cut the chain to length and remember that the Shimano quick link has that little arrow, meaning that you have to point it in the direction that the chain is usually traveling. And at this point, you can definitely give your drivetrain a spin and adjust that low limit screw. But I'm convinced that you guys would much rather use it with a shifter. Remember the Q's shifter is actually a link glide shifter. So you can use that XT link glide if you wanna have that double up shift like all the XT's do. Now I'm not gonna bother you guys with how to install a shifter. I'm gonna refer to that one by 12 installation video because it covers pretty much everything in detail. But I'm gonna have remind you folks that at the end of it, you are gonna have to check your B gap adjustment. But that's pretty trivial these days. You're gonna use the line for 50 tooth because that's the cassette that we have. But enough talking about the installation. Why don't we test that Shimano Q's, see how it performs. Backpedaling on that largest cog used to be such a big deal for previous 11 speed generation drivetrains. On Shimano Q's U6000, I can do this all day long, no problem whatsoever. My chain is never gonna come off of that 50 tooth cog. That's definitely good if you remember that we're using a 52 millimeter chain line and the chain stay of the hardtail is 430 millimeters, so fairly short. But what about shifting to easier gears? So the hyper glide. As you can see, this is as good as the good old hyper glide or the 12 speed hyper glide plus. And if shifting to an easier gear is where you usually break teeth off of the cassette, something that cues or link glide is supposed to fix, shifting to harder gears is where you usually break chains, definitely on e-bikes, uh, shifting under full power and things like that. Cues is gonna be slower shifting down the cassette because the chain is gonna wait for the next shift ramp before it moves from the bigger cog to the smaller cog. This is baked in by design. And if you try to dump multiple gears at a time, So there you have it guys. Remember Shimano Q's is meant to use the Link Glide technology for that mid to entry level price point bikes, whether they're mountain bike or more like hybrids. And it's easy to install. It seems to work really well. That is if you don't mind the slowness in shifting down the cassette or to a higher gear. Remember that is done so you can shift at any point under full power without breaking teeth of the cassette, without breaking chains. Is that a deal breaker for you folks? Would you consider a Shimano Q's for your next mountain bike build? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know what other tests you guys want me to do. I know I will test that same drivetrain with, this is a 5100 derailleur and I have an 11 speed old style shifter as well. Is there any other test that you would want me to do? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you liked this. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Until next time, hope to see you folks on the trails. Cheers guys, cheers.